Hey guys, and welcome to Geared On For What? Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to design a compound planetary gearbox, like this one, or 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 even this one. In detail, from start to finish, this is something that I've learned to do the hard way over the past year, and now I'm ready to share everything that I've learned with you. In this video, I'm gonna go through the two different methods of calculating how many teeth to use on each gear, uh, the first method consists of a bunch of math equations, and the second method cuts out most of the math because I've written an Arduino program to calculate the ratios for you. And now there's actually a second program that Corey Boatwright, who is part of the Patron Fellowship, ported over to Java. Currently, those programs are only available to my patrons, but if you're not a patron, don't worry, there will be no child left behind. Before we can really get started, I need to describe in detail what a compound planetary gear set is and the specific type that we'll be designing today. A compound planetary gear set is simply defined as two planetary gear sets with some components interconnecting them in some way. The particular design that I'll be working with today is gonna to be the same as these, and that involves directly interconnecting the planet gears from one stage to the other so that they become one component like this, or like this. So let's get started. First off, let's talk about design considerations. The larger gear teeth that you use, the more torque your setup will be able to handle. But this is at the expense of not getting the ratio that you'd like. There's a reason I'm not an artist. Number two, using more gear teeth means that you'll be able to create a much wider array of ratios. But this comes at the expense of computing power, printability, and torque throughput. The more planet gears your setup has, the more torque it will be able to handle. But this is at the expense of efficiency and a few other factors. And number four, if you don't use a planet carrier, which looks like this, having at least three sections or modules to your gearbox is vital to its ability to be able to handle torque. This is because the carrier would normally hold the planets parallel to the sun gear. But if you're planning on 3D printing this gearbox, Installing a carrier would require ball bearings or else it would cause excessive heat buildup. So I found that it's easier to design it without one and add a third module instead. Now just to warn you, I'm going to use the word module in this video with two different meanings. Here I use the word module as in modular or slices of the gearbox. But elsewhere the word module will refer to the physical size of the gear teeth. Number five. To avoid heat buildup on the sun gear in high speed or high torque applications, design your sun gear to have a lot of teeth. If you don't, each tooth is going to be in use for a longer duty cycle, resulting in excessive heat buildup on the sun gear. Ideally, you would want to design your sun gear to have as many teeth as your planet gears do, multiplied by how many planet gears you have. Of course, like everything else that I've mentioned, there's a drawback to that. Having a sun gear with a lot of teeth makes it harder to reach high ratios in your calculations. Okay, so that's it for design considerations. I skipped over the effects of changing parameters like helix angle and pressure angle, but I may cover things like that in a future video. By this time, you're probably realizing how many factors go into these designs. I know it's a lot for one video, but don't fall asleep just yet. The next section won't be as boring. Just kidding, it will. On to equations. The equations that I'll be providing in this video are only valid when ring gear number one is stationary, sun gear number one is the input, and ring gear number two is the output. For these specific gear sets, if there is a sun gear number four, you can actually use this equation the same way if ring gear number four is stationary, sun gear number four is the input, and ring gear number three is the output. The same applies to the program designed to make these calculations. There are many different ways that you can transmit power through this style of gearbox that will give you different ratios, but that's outside the scope of this video. Now, that program that I've mentioned, you'll see that later in this video. It basically runs through a bunch of different gearing combinations, doing guess and check to find the one closest to what you requested, does all the math for you, and outputs the results into a .csv file. You can open up that up in Excel and sort by gear ratio, number of teeth, uh, the size of the teeth. It's currently only available to my patrons, and if you have the program, you might as well skip ahead to here. 
while the rest of us do some math. Okay, now that I got all of that out of the way, let's design a compound planetary the hard way. To get started, we need to find two planetary gear sets with a similar number of teeth that both have the same number of planet gears, and the planet gears need to be able to be perfectly evenly spaced. That's really important. Now, I'm going to give you a link to this tool that I use to do this quickly and efficiently. But first, I need to warn you, this tool does not assure that the planet gears are spaced at perfect intervals. So you need to use these two equations to check that for both stages. But keep in mind that these two equations will not prevent you from making planet gears that overlap or engage each other. Use the link that I mentioned earlier to visually check for that. Basically, this is going to give you an educatedly random ratio. The closer the number of teeth is between the first and the second stage, the higher the ratio is going to be, and vice versa. After checking that your two planetary st stages meet all of this criteria that I've mentioned earlier, you can use this equation to find out what your final ratio will be. When R1 is the number of teeth in the ring gear for the first stage, S1 is the number of teeth in the sun gear for the first stage, and so on. By the way, you don't need to be pausing the video to write this stuff down. I'll put the entire script for this video in the description for you. You're welcome. The next thing that you need to do is size your first planetary stage to the final dimensions that you need it to be in your CAD program. You need to do this now so that you know what the module of the gear teeth is going to be for the first stage. And then you modify the module of the gear teeth for the second stage until the planet gears are centered on each other. Use this equation to size the second stage accordingly. By the way, the word module is the metric equivalent of diametral pitch in inch standard gears. They both mean units of pitch diameter divided by the number of teeth, or in simple terms, how big the gear teeth are. The meat over. Okay, so I think that's everything that you need to know in order to do this manually. If you'd like to skip over the part where I show my patrons how to operate the program, skip ahead to here. Okay patrons, first off I'd like to say thank you all for all of your support. It means a lot to me. I spend a considerable amount of time making this content educational, occasionally correct, and somewhat entertaining. I really appreciate your contributions. Thank you. As mentioned earlier, there are currently two versions of the program and both are going to do approximately the same thing. The original version was written in Arduino code and requires an Arduino board to run it, ideally an Arduino do. The only benefit to using that version of the program comes if you understand Arduino code. Then you have the ability to modify the program to best suit your application. The second program is something that you don't need external hardware to run. For this, you can thank Corey Boltwright, who is part of the Patron Fellowship. He ported the Arduino program into Java, which means he translated it, and while he was at it, he made a lot of improvements to it too. So this is the Java version of the program, and a lot of this stuff is very self-explanatory. Um, one thing I should go through here is set outside diameter. That sets the outside diameter of the first ring gear, and the next one will be really close, but it could be larger or smaller than this number. And also, one thing you should know is that if you make your gears helical gears, this will be wrong. It, your gears will be slightly larger if they're helical gears, because that's not calculated in this program. So. So this will get you close, and then you can mul multiply the module of both stages by the same factor to adjust it uh, slightly one way or the other. Another thing that should be explained here is maximum planet sun size ratio. If this setting wasn't here, your, the program would output to have huge planet gears and a really small sun gear, which isn't very ideal for this compound planetary arrangement. So this setting is, how much bigger can the planet gears be than the sun gear? And then minimum two size millimeters. This is the module of the gears that you're working with. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, module is units of pitch diameter divided by the number of teeth. Just set this to the smallest teeth that you can 3D print. Uh, for me, that's about 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Um, and then target gear ratio. This is if you're looking for an exact ratio, that's say 50 to 1. You can type in 50 in here. And then it will try to get as close as it can to a planetary gear set with all of these constraints, all of these constraints, and it'll try to, it'll try to get as close as it can to a 50 to 1. Now, it's not always going to get right on. It might be 51.33 to 1 or 
49.33 to 1. It's very hard to get an exact ratio uh, with compound planetaries, but this does as best as it can. Then, in order to get the results from all of this, it puts it out in a CSV file, which is going to give you every result it found. Um, and as it gets closer to 50 to 1, it's not going to give you as many gear sets anymore. So I'm just going to call this 50 to 1 and just see what it comes out with. And then I click Start Calculating. This is what's in this file. Um, here's a ratio that's negative 68 to 1 uh, with four planet gears. Uh, this is the module you use when you make the gears with uh, the gear generator in Fusion 360. Uh, th this is the number of teeth on sun number one, number of teeth on planet number one, number of teeth on ring number one. Uh, this is something that comes in, into play in CAD. Uh, it's, quite often it doesn't work, but uh, you don't absolutely need it either. Um, of course, this is, the plant, this is the module of the second stage gear set. And number of teeth on sun number two, number of teeth on planet number two, number of teeth on ring number two. And yet again, uh, this is how much to, rot eat, to rotate each gear to make the teeth mesh, but it doesn't always work. So then uh, once you get your ratio that you want, you just copy. And then I like to paste it into a notepad. Now the reason I'm typing this up in a notepad, Fusion 360 doesn't let you enter in multi-line text in a sketch, which means that you need to keep clicking add text uh, Unless you already have multi-line text, then it'll let you copy-paste it in, and it's much easier. Um, and these numbers mean a lot more when uh, you get them in the program. It's nice to have that sketch saved in Fusion 360 with all of the information that you use to design the gears. Module of the first stage. I call this module PG1. The module of the second stage, 0.7078. Okay, so now for the Arduino program. I'm just going to go through this really quickly. Uh, there's a lot of instructions written into the Arduino program. So one thing I should have mentioned uh, in the last section is that uh, if you change target gear ratio to zero, it will actually, it'll just give you every combination it can come up with. This can take a very, very long time in Arduino, and it also can take a really long time with the Java program too. So this ideally would give me the exact same output, and that's the ideal result, but we'll see what the actual result is. One thing, if you can't get this to load on an Arduino board and it's smaller than an Arduino Do, uh, like if you're using an Arduino Mega or if you're using just a regular Arduino, change this number down and it'll likely be able to load then. The higher this number is, the larger array that you'll be able to get of gear ratios but uh, your Arduino board may not have enough memory to use that. Uh, so adjust this number accordingly to however, many, uh, to however many gear ratios you can fit on your board's memory. This is what it'll show you if you don't have enough memory to have this number turned up all the way. 500. There we go. Uh, you always want to make sure you have your baud rate set, right? 250,000. Well, it didn't give me the exact same results, but I do see a 66.46 6 to 1 in here, so... Uh, oh, this one actually gave me a 50. Uh, so to output the numbers from this program, you copy this and paste it into a text file, and you change the extension from .txt to .csv. And then you can open up that file in Excel and sort out the ratios. Okay, so this is all the information that I need. So I'm going to copy this, open up a new design in Fusion 360, start a sketch, and then go text, and enter that all in. Now you can't you can't do multi-line text in Fusion 360 unless you copy it from somewhere else and paste it in. It's a really nice trick. So I put that sketch on just my base drawing. Okay, so now we've got all the information that we need in Fusion 360 to make this gear ratio. But first off, Fusion 360 doesn't have any uh, add-ins from factory to create helical gears. Uh, this is something that I added, and actually Fusion only has uh, something to make straight cut gears. But Ross Korsky did us all a favor and made this really awesome gear generator add-in for Fusion 360. All you have to do is select your operating system and uh, 
go ahead and download this and install it into Fusion 360. And hey, look, he gave me a shout out. That's awesome. I just saw that now. I love it. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Anyways, this add-on is amazing. I, I love it. I wouldn't have a YouTube channel or a Thingiverse account if it wasn't for this add-in. I, I, I don't know what I would be doing right now. I wouldn't be making this video. So anyways, I've already got this add-in installed. Honestly, I had a lot of, I had a lot of trouble figuring out how to get this thing installed because I'm a little bad at computers. But um, anyways, let's make this gear set. So I like to make uh, the gears in order of sun gear, planet gear, ring gear, and I like to do the first stage first and then the second stage. So I normally make sun gear left-handed and sun gear on the first stage is 10 teeth. Um, that's going to require some undercut, so I better go to a 30 degree pressure angle. I like to keep the pressure angle as low as possible. Helix angle, I always use 30. Never change the helix angle in one of your designs. If you're going to use 0 degrees, use 0 degrees. And if you're going to use 30, use 30. But never ever alter it between your first stage and your second stage, otherwise your calculations for module will be wrong. Um, so the module on the first stage is 9.9202. Number of teeth, backlash. For backlash, I always use 0.2. Gear thickness, I'll go 5. Now, you should probably write down this pitch diameter number, otherwise you'll have to re-enter this information uh, to get this number. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down now. 10.626. Hey, it's like stitch, 626. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and generate that gear. Okay, so that is the first gear. That is the sun gear. Now for the planet gears. Um, keep in mind the planet gear meshes the sun gear, so that has to be the opposite handedness, and there's that nice little box that pops up and shows you that. Uh, one mistake that's easy to make here is that the ring gears are actually, uh, you actually cut the gear out of a cylinder. That switches the handedness, so the Sun gear is left-handed, the planet gears are right-handed, and the ring gear is right-handed. Now the planet gear has 10 teeth on the first stage, and that should have 0.2 backlash. It's actually going to be the exact same gear as the sun gear, so I'm going to go ahead and generate that. And then the ring gear has 30 teeth. And the backlash on the ring gear, I actually use a negative backlash typically. Uh, this is because the gear is cut out of a cylinder again. And that gives you a little bit of extra clearance. Now there's one more thing that you have to do with this ring gear to really make it work. Um, and this is something I've just learned about and I haven't even used it yet. But this is something that uh, Ross K, uh, the guy who made this helical gear generator, he actually emailed me and told me that I needed to be doing this until he gets an update out for it to uh, actually make ex or gears with internal teeth properly. So I'll show you guys that when we get to it. Okay, I'm going to edit this part in, uh, so just bear with me here. You see some stuff done on the timeline. Uh, that's stuff that I'm about to do. But for now, I just want to show you how to fix these gears uh, that we're going to cut out of the cylinder for the ring gears. Um, and here's how you go about it. When you load a, a ring gear, so say this 41 tooth ring gear, um, take and move your timeline back one step, or two steps rather, and you'll see now you just have one tooth. Now you need to pull this tooth out um, 0.25 or hold up. Now you need to pull this tooth out somewhere between 0.25 multiplied by the module or 0.5 multiplied by the module, depending on how much clearance you want. So I'm going to try this at, I'm just going to go with 0.3. Um, and you need to do press pull, which is keyboard shortcut Q, and then grab the face of this tooth, and I'm going to do 0.3. And then if you drag your timeline ahead, two more steps. Now every tooth on this gear should generate with that extra 0.3 out on it. Um, so I'm going to go back and do that to this ring gear too then. And since the module on these are, they're both just about one, I'm just going to use 0.3. It doesn't need to be an exact math as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so there's everything for the first stage of the gearbox. Now, there's no sense in moving these components right now, because if you do, you have to ground them to make them stay there. So 
We'll just leave them where they are and keep piling gears up on top of them. So the second stage, 0 0.7078 for the module. And now we'll go and repeat. And module and back closet for external gears and your thickness supply and generator. And 15 teeth, the same set, right handed. And 14 teeth, the ring gear and back closet comes in here, right handed. Yep. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these gears for my second planetary stage and move them. And I'll move them, uh, what, like 30 millimeters? Yeah, that's far enough. I'll probably move them back a little bit, but. Um, anyways, the next thing you want to do is make sure that the gear set that you made is valid. Um, what I mean is make sure that the planets don't overlap. I mean, you should have calculated that, and the calculator does all that for you, but it's not perfect. I, I mean, I wrote the original code for it, so it's probably, yeah, not going to be perfect. So first thing I'm going to do is move that 10.626 that was my pitch diameter. Remember, um... What you need to do is you need to move the sun gear uh, this way, the pitch diameter of the sun gear plus the pitch diameter of the planet gear divided by two. Since the pitch, since the sun gear in this case and the planet gear are actually the same gear, all you really need to do is move it over 10.626 for this set, anyways. And then you can see that's engaging the outer ring, and I'll turn the sun gear to make that engage the planet gear. There we go. And now I'll hide my first stage and do the same thing in the back. When you move your number two planet gear, you need to move it the exact same amount that you moved your number one planet gear so that they stay, so that they stay centered on each other. So this will be 10.626 also. Now I'm going to get rid of my sketch for my gearing information. And now I'm just going to do a temporary, just to save myself some time in case something on this design isn't going to work, I'm going to just do a temporary pattern of bodies on this planet gear. Um, so I'm just going to click circular pattern, uh, make sure you click capture position. Axis is going to be my Z axis. And this has four planets. So it looks like if I turn this gear to the right somewhat, gear will engage the sun and the ring. If I turn this one by just half a tooth, it'll engage the sun and the ring. If I turn this one to the left a little bit, it'll engage the sun and the ring. So that's good. I'll undo that. And then I'll hide my second stage planetary gear set and bring the first one back in. And it looks like this one will work too, as long as I uh, turn this one, one tooth, half a tooth there. Turn this one, one or one tooth, half a tooth, and it'll line up with the ring and the sun gear. All right, everything looks good there. Now I'm going to undo that pattern of bodies because uh, otherwise it'll end up with more work. Now I'm going to go ahead and mirror all of these gears. Because I like to make all of my gears into uh, helical gears, into uh, double helical gears, that keeps them in place, I like to mirror them. So you click on mirror, and then object, you select the body, and then mirror plane, whatever side, as long as you just keep on the same side for all of them. At this point, if you accidentally created a gear with the wrong hat in this, if you just mirror it opposite of the rest of them in that set, it'll actually work out. You just mirror it on the other side and then move it back to where it needs to be. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and combine those bodies. So here's where I'm at. From here, I'm going to go ahead and make a new component. Uh, right click on your uh, top thing there and click new component. And I'm going to call it uh, Sun Gears. I'm going to call it Sun Gears. I'm going to make another new component. Call it Planet Gears. And I'm just going to go ahead and make another new component and call it Ring Gears. I'm going to make my active component into... I'm going to make Planet Gears my active component. 
and take and move all of the planet gears into that component. And then I'm going to click on, uh, after I move the body out of the component for the planet gears, I'm just going to click right click and click remove. And I'm going to do the same thing with the sun gear. Both sun gears. Can make sun gear and the sun gears there. This. There we go. Now I've only got my two ring gears left to do, so make ring gears the active component and move them into there. And I like doing this because it really shortens up my list. Okay, so I'll get the ring gears out of the way, hide those. Okay, so now I'm ready to take and do a pattern on these planet gears. So I'm going to select Planet Gears as my active component, and I'm going to do Create Pattern, Pattern Type Bodies, select the body, Axis, I'm going to do it on the Z axis again, and I'm going to do 4, and then I'm going to hide those, and then I'm going to do the same thing for the second stage. Now I'm going to move these one millimeter away so I'll do 20 and then I'll change that to 19. First I'm going to align all of my planet gears with the sun gear. It, make sure if you just click move and then click on the gear that you actually select the center of the gear and then you take and turn the gear. Now it's kinda hard to see this so you have to zoom in quite a bit and uh, just adjust this around until it's right Sometimes, on this sketch, if you look at Rotate Planetary Gear 1, 27, sometimes if you type that number in, it'll be perfect, but there's something wrong with my equation there to where it doesn't always work. So try uh, 27 and then try negative 27. And in this case, it's not working. Sometimes it does. So uh, I guess the other thing to do is to just turn it manually. Uh, per degree until you get it about right. And then the other two are already meshing, so I'll get rid of these four now. And I'll do the back ones. Alright, now all of these gears are meshing the sun gear which means that they'll also be meshing the ring gear. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the planet gears and the sun gear and I'm going to make the ring gears. The way that I'm doing this is technically wrong. If if not wrong in a moral sense, but uh subtracting uh using a cylinder and subtracting a gear from it does not give you a perfect internal gear. But it's good enough for 3D printing and I'm going to try to adjust it and I'll show you guys how I'll do that the way that Ross Case told me to and we'll see if that works out to make this a better internal gear. So I have pre-made uh, the ring gears for the robotic arm project. I've pre-made the shell of them so all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that shell that I've already made and move it into my current drawing. I'm going to click copy on the other one and click paste new here. Now I've got a little bit of a problem. You see there isn't much room between the edge of the ring gear and that gear there. And I'm not sure how I'm going to make that work. But we'll see. Maybe I can scale these the whole gear set down a little bit and make it work that way. Uh, for now I'm going to do a section analysis in order to see what it all looks like. So I'm just going to select this interface here on this cut and then click OK. And then that shows me how much room I have between here, which I can click inspect. If I click the eye on the keyboard I see inspect and I can get a measurement from here to the top of here and that's a millimeter. So I've got a millimeter of clearance between the top of my gear or between the outside of the gear and the outside of the ring uh, which is a little small but it should work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a combine. I'm going to combine this body with the ring gear and I'm going to do a cut.
Now I'm going to turn off my analysis, that section analysis, and then these ring gears should be done. I'll accept for the numbers on them. So the next step in fixing these gears to make them proper internal gears is to, uh, once you get them cut out of the cylinder, we've already extended this tooth on here so that it sticks further into the ring. Now I'm going to create a sketch on this plane. and check and see what the current di diameter is and then I'm going to add just a little bit to that so instead of 20, 29.5 we'll probably do see what 30 looks like that looks pretty good now I'm going to extrude out that section which is just going to cut the tips of the teeth off a little bit shorter There, look at that clearance. They've already got the cut in them. I really liked the fact that I pre-made these because it makes it really easy to just go into this other drawing and grab that, and then I could just close that drawing. Um, and the sketches for these are right inside that component, and everything is just fine and dandy. And since I've got this component of ring gears inside another ring gears component, what I can do is I can click and drag this into my main component. But Fusion 360 won't let me do that unless I delete these features that are after the history marker. So if you're ever having trouble moving components, it's because uh, you have features after your history marker. So if you just go in and delete those, move it down into my base component. And then I'm just going to get rid of my old ring gears component that I didn't need. So now I have my two ring gears. Now what I need to do is I need to make four of them. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna hide the ring gears. I'll put the numbers on them later. Uh, now I'm gonna take my planet gears and do the same thing. Copy module number one. There, now what I have to do is I have to go in and do a loft between this planet gear and this planet gear, this planet gear, and this planet gear. Now the reason I didn't do a loft on all of these before I patterned them is because they're all different. Meaning that this planet gear, once all combined together, these gears will be turned to different places than they would for this one. That's also why I number them 1, 2, 3, 4. Because this gearbox has to be phased when you assemble it together because all of the gears are different. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a bunch of lofts. Let's create loft also I figure I might as well explain myself as to why I'm doing a loft here instead of putting a cylinder in between them or something like that uh, the reason I do a loft is because it makes the object a little bit more 3d printable um, among other reasons uh, like it would be a simpler design to put a cylinder in there uh, a cylinder would have to bridge around the outside of the teeth and you can't actually bridge with uh, a line that isn't straight because uh, there's nothing to hold the plastic there so if you're gonna bridge you'd need to use a polygon uh, so that as it leaves each tooth it's still going in a straight line but then you're bridging in the area where your teeth need to engage and various things like that now there is a slight clearance issue when it comes to uh, how the ring gears are actually a little bit wider than they need to be and then that lip right there and usually I go in and fix that somehow um, so that there's not going to be a clearance issue there now the sun gears it's the same deal as the planet gears um, and the ring gears uh, you're going to need four of them because I normally do this with four modules um, you could, of course, you can either design this style of gearbox with uh, four modules, or you could do three, and then you might as well make the middle module twice as long, um, so that the gears per module have the same teeth and the same amount of teeth and engagement, or the same length of, uh, so that they can transmit equal amounts of torque. Because if you did this with three modules, these two gear sets would be the same, and then this poor little guy would be supporting everything that both of these can do. So. If you're only going to do three modules, do it kind of like I did the winch gearbox, where the middle of it is twice as long as the two outsides, because I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, if you're going to do four modules, 
of course these rings this one's gonna drive with this one and this one's gonna drive with this one uh, that type of deal and yeah so anyways normally I go in and I combine normally I don't use this Sun gear I just take it right out and then I combine this Sun gear directly with this one and then put the motor shaft through here and that allows you to tie modules one and three together even further giving you even less chance of the gearbox having backlash and various other things um, so that's something I'll get to I'll eventually uh, tie these two Sun gears together and then I got to go in and uh, label all of my planet gears with numbers one two three four and then I always leave marks on them so that you can align it with the number one ring gear um, as well I've got to go in and label one two three four on these ring gears and then this gearbox I'll upload it to Thingiverse maybe one day uh, another thing I gotta do is I gotta I'll show you there's a slight clearance issue that's gonna happen right here where this loft goes up you can actually see it this loft is engaging or is cutting into this ring gear and I will have to fix that um, and I'll have to fix it on module two, one, two, three, and four. So I might as well get rid of my copy for ring gears three and four, and fix it on modules one and two before I copy it the next time. Um, but I'll take care of that on my own. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably going to do a sketch and a little sweep all the way around, or a revolute just to cut in on this sun or ring gear a little bit. Well, I think that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, so thank you for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. By the way, I also have a new Twitter account uh, that will be linked in the channel banner. And a bunch of other stuff. Links in the description. There's tons of them. Go check that stuff out. Thank you guys so much for watching. And yeah. By the word, the word, they both mean units of pitch. Damn it. A little, a little.